and how you guys doing welcome to the show it is 1 14 2022 your biker news today is going to include a member of the bulldog gang and savage assassins mc has been arrested for a murder of a homeless man and what i am surprised about when you see the video is the police came out even after searching the clubhouse and said that the Sa savage assassins had nothing to do with this it was on his own accord that he decided to do this act so that is a first that is i've ever heard been doing this that the clubs haven't been involved in this so hey you got to give kudos to him for saying hey the club had nothing to do with this this was a lone wolf type of attack and so on also thunder beach yeah they found out who was stealing motorcycles down there at that rally three have been caught two they are looking for members of the iron horsemen are uh, in custody i believe and then they're looking for two members of the wheel of souls let's get into this all righty all righty you know what was funny was yesterday afternoon i guess bb did a news coverage of the hell's uh outcast something like that up in minneapolis we've been following that story since its beginning where members were arrested for hitting on a bouncer because they were not allowed to wear their colors while another club did and there was a whole lot of complaining about how he covered the story. You have to remember, when we do cover these stories, it's a lot of opinions, our personal opinions, and it's put out there as debate. Well, people took it as he was turning on the clubs. For one, let me get this out there, because I'm going to explain it on a different video I got coming up. When we're doing the news, we're trying to be as straight down the middle as we can. Personally, I've had problems with that in the past. I swayed one way where I should have stayed in the middle. I'm making that course uh, correction. We're not on the club side. We're not against the club side. We're trying to present the information to the biker community on what is happening. I get it. Clubs don't like it because, and their supporters especially, while well, you're putting club business out there. How many times do we have to tell you that this is public information? It's already out in the public. While well, you're bringing people to it. And it's news. That's what happens. Best way not to have it brought is not be in the news. But when he gives an opinion on how stupid it was to risk years of your life because you got upset because a private establishment said we don't want your colors in there it kind of makes sense a lot of bars a lot of rallies ain't including ain't including colors anymore that's their choice they're a private business So why not just walk away? No, instead, you know, one guy got five years, the other two. That's all he was talking about. So for your you haters or you club suckers, you know, basically meaning supporters that are on their knees, that want to get upset over an opinion like that, it seems just like common sense to me. But I do get that he, nothing clubs do is wrong. I get that from people. Which isn't the truth. Not in a society that has logic. 
things that you are seeing in the news could be to where you might be able to fix something. But that's on the clubs. It's like, don't shoot the messenger. Yes, we're the messenger. If you don't like how we cover the news, go find it uh, somewhere else. But to say that he is bringing bad on the club scene or I do it, you know what? That is the most ridiculous argument I've ever heard. Trying to blame somebody for something somebody else did. It's craziness. And we do help the clubs as much as we can. Problem with that is it usually comes and bites you back in the ass. So, in an upcoming video, you'll see what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Let's go to our first news story here. And this is the one I was talking about, where a guy who happened to have membership in a club, in a gang, killed a homeless guy, apparently for no reason at all. I brought this subject up on The Morning Who yesterday with China Dow saying, you know what? Where's everybody's morality? What did you get from killing that guy for no reason at all? Did it make you feel like you had bigger balls? What did it do? Were you in a hard spot where you needed three hots and a cot? Well, you're probably going to get that for the rest of your life. Was it worth it is what I'm asking. Just like he did, BD, with that other story. Here it is. Larry Bolin with a firm declaration on Monday after 33 year old Jesse Gonzalez was arrested for the murder of 27 year old Angel Cortez Flores, a homeless Sad man stuff. who was stabbed to death on December 18th on Palm and Olive Avenue. As we uh, reviewed the surveillance footage and conducted our investigation, we actually realized that Mr. Cortez uh, had been assaulted uh, by suspect Gonzalez at about 3 a.m. in the morning on December 18th. According to police, Gonzalez is part of the Savage Assassins Motorcycle Club in Fresno. Officers served a search warrant on the club on January 7th, searching for evidence. Bullen says they do not believe the club was involved in the murder. We feel this was nothing that the Savage Assassin Motorcycle Club put him up to. Uh, this was an isolated incident. Uh, we still don't know truly what the true motivation of Mr. Gonzalez was. Gonzalez is being held in the Sutter County Jail after he was tracked down and arrested at a home in Yuba City. It was the 72nd of 74 murders in Fresno in 2021. Twelve of those were homeless victims. Lieutenant Boland says arrests have been made in six of the cases, including Gonzalez. Police hoping 2022 does not look the same. Each bike rally, but an investigation. Into okay, that is going to be about the bike rally coming up where they found the thieves. But going back to this story that we just heard, and hopefully you heard it, where they said they do not believe that it was the motorcycle club that gave some kind of orders or participated in any of that stuff. That's the kind of reporting I wish the media as well as the police would put out there. Not this biker gang this, motorcycle gang that. And that does bring up an, a, another issue because a lot of people were crying and whining about that. Why do you guys, when you're covering news, say motorcycle gang or biker gang? One thing you guys do not realize is the concept of fair use. Fair use has to do with using other people's articles or using uh, photographs in a news story that's fair use if it's a news story you're gonna put out there okay it's a picture of this club or that club but you cannot absolutely cannot change the article you can give opinions on it but you cannot change the wording and i've discussed this I don't know how many damn times, but it don't get pe through people's thick skulls, especially the haters. 
while you're calling a motorcycle gang. D let's sit down, take your willy out of your hand because you're going to blind yourself. And let's listen to what we just said. We cannot change it. We are a part of news associations. I'm a part of two, the LNA News Broadcasting Association and the Online News Association. Black Dragon, I believe, is a part of ONA. So it's different for us, even though we're doing editorials. And by the way, the way we present it, we don't even have to show you the article. We can just, you know, take bits and pieces. The reason why we do show the article is so you can follow along. And then you can click that link in the description box and read the article yourself. That's why it's done. It's not like, hey, well, let's just read this to him. No. We're trying to give you a source of information so you can follow up on it. But this is what these haters don't get. There's so much that they think we care about. I've always said it. Any time that we're mentioned by haters, be it individuals, other podcasts, other channels, our numbers skyrocket. And they don't go down. You know why? Because we're being real. We're not going to be seen as sucking on this one or sucking on that one. No, we're trying to do this down the middle and not be these other news organizations. And there's a lot coming out in 2022, but let's get to this story again. This is about the bike theft. Crimes that happened that weekend wrapped up today. That's according to Panama City Beach Police. News Channel 7's Danny Travis joins us from Panama City Beach. And Danny, what can you tell us about this investigation into motorcycle theft? Nisa, that's right. Beach police officials tell us on the morning of October 24th, five customized motorcycles worth almost $200,000 in total were stolen right here in the area of the 1400 block on Front Beach Road. Now, after the two month long investigation, police officials say they've recovered two of the five motorcycles with several arrests being made. The engines were revving and the thunder was loud around Panama City Beach for the fall Thunder Beach bike rally. A lot of people uh, might have heard the story. We had a lot of motorcycles stolen. Beach Police Chief J.R. Talamonte says five customized motorcycles were stolen that weekend. We went on a little trip. We found uh, our primary suspects. We found our motorcycles, and we were able to put uh, three uh, out of the five of these suspects in jail. Talamonte says Christopher Hill, William Hill, and Jared Billingsley, all from Graceville, have been arrested. Two of them are still uh, at large, but we're looking for them. And uh, we have a, uh, an inmate jumpsuit waiting for them as soon as we put our hands on them. Beach police has issued warrants for two men from Alabama, Richard Harvey and Kenjorian Walker. Talamente says these five men were a part of two outlaw motorcycle gangs and conspired together. Just like any other outlaw, you're gonna end up in jail any t at one point or another. You know, we're just happy we're able to put them in jail for this case. In jail, it's being charged with grand theft auto. Nope, they're going to have to answer for their crimes. And the other two that are on the run, they're going to have to keep on running until we find them. And we will. Now, Talamantes is sending a message. If you come to this town for the sole purpose of trying to victimize our, our community or our visitors, you can bet that we are going to do everything we possibly can to find you. And what's usually touted as a safe bike rally is what Talamante says they're working to keep it as. We did reach out to Thunder Beach officials who say they're just appreciative for Beach Police being so proactive. Now, because of this, Thunder Beach officials say this investigation is incentive for it not to happen at the upcoming spring bike rally. Well, there you go right there. They got the suspects. And the sad part of it is you can see the distinction between the last story and this story where they made sure to say motorcycle gang. And you have to sit back and think to yourself, well, damn, here you got three guys or four, whatever it was, or how many members were a part of the Iron Horse or the Wheels of Soul. 
but the whole club suffers. I get it. Well, my brother can do no wrong. Well, yeah, until it brings that damn law enforcement all over your ass. It, it has to come from the inside. It is not people like me or BD or anybody doing Biker News' fault for the actions that's being covered. I just think it's very important for that premise to be put out there. Monday's video, well, you might be seeing this two months later, so it'll be up. But anyway, that video, I'm going to go over 2022 with us in depth. Our new goals, our new ways of looking at things, how we cover stuff. The associations that we're in, we'll talk about fair use because we hear, we, my God, people cry like little babies on stuff. Uh, but they don't sit back and say, well... Wait a second. Yeah, that's how it works. Anyway, guys, uh, that is it for today. I'll see you later. Rock on. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.